What's going ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video. Today I'll be taking a look at the entry list for the 2024 Food City 500 at Bristol. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to start and talk about the one car for Trackhouse Racing. This one's going to be driven by Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain's off to pretty solid start in 2024 as he currently has two top fives through the first four races of the season. Now, Ross Chastain historically has been kind of hit or miss with Trackhouse Racing at this racetrack, but they can play some good strategy. I would not be surprised or shocked if Ross Chastain has a chance and opportunity to get his first win of the 2024 season. Up next, how about the two car for Team Penske? This one's going to be driven by Austin Sinder. Austin Erk, I believe, is contender for victories here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, but I don't think he's won in any series up to this point at this racetrack. Also, Austin is coming off a not a great performance at Phoenix, where unfortunately he finished last after crashing out on lap number six. He'll be looking to have a bounce back performance and have a great run this weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the three car for Richard Childress Racing? This one's going to be driven by Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon's had an abysmal start of 2024. He's had three out of four races where he's been involved in an incident and finished five or six laps down at Phoenix International Raceway. He's looking for a bounce back performance, but unfortunately the RCR cars have struggled immensely so far on the short tracks and maybe even the road course as well. We'll see if Austin Dillon can have a bounce back performance at Bristol. Up next, how about the four car for Stuart Haas Racing? This one's going to be driven by Josh Berry. Josh Berry, I think, could be an underdog this weekend because he has been a pretty good short track racer and has contended for top fives and top tens in the Xfinity Series as well with Junior Motorsports. I think Josh Berry will have a solid shot to get a top 10 or top 15 because SHR's had a good short track program. We'll see if Josh Berry can have a good run this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway in the four car. Up next, how about the five car for Hendrick Motorsports? This one's going to be driven by Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's been pretty good at this racetrack in the past. He did finish in the top five the last time he ran here. He didn't have a great run at Phoenix, but he also does have a win at this racetrack. He won the fall race in 2021. I expect Kyle Larson to have a pretty bounce back performance, and I think he'll have a good chance and opportunity to potentially get his second win in five races so far in the 2024 season. Up next, how about the sixth car for RFK Racing? This one's going to be driven by Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski has been one of the more underrated drivers at Phoenix over the course of the last 10 to 15 years. And he is coming off of having a great performance at Phoenix International Race where he finished inside the top five. I think Keselowski is going to have a really good chance and opportunity to contend for the victory. We know the RFK cars have been faster. I think he will be a threat and contender to have a chance to get the win this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway in the six car. Up next, how about the seven car for Spire Motorsports? This one's going to be driven by Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy started off on a pretty solid note, but he unfortunately had his first DNF in 45 races last week at Phoenix. He's looking to have a bounce back performance in the number seven car and looks to go out and try to win. I don't think he's going to really have a chance and opportunity to get the win and the victory, but I think he will have a solid shot and opportunity to maybe get a top 10 or top 15. This weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the A car for Richard Childress Racing? This one's going to be driven by Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch had a terrible performance at Phoenix last week and got caught up in an incident and wreck, qualified horrendously, and finished 22nd. Now, I do think Kyle Busch has a good chance here. He's going to run the Truck Series race on Saturday evening, which I think he does have a really good chance and possibility to win. He's my pick for that race. I think Kyle Busch have a good chance to win the truck race and maybe use some of that luck in that speed and maybe could have a chance and opportunity to get first win of 2024 this weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports? This one's going to be driven by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott did finish in the back or the mid pack in the Cup Series race at Phoenix, but let's be honest, he did have a top 10 car. Now, Chase Elliott historically has been pretty solid at this racetrack throughout his NASCAR Cup Series career, but he hasn't been great the last couple times we've ran here. I do think that Chase Elliott could have a bounce back performance, though. I think he does have a chance and opportunity to maybe get a top five or top 10 if the speed is there like it's been in the past. Up next, how about the 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This one's going to be driven by Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson's had a really good start to the 2024 season. He has so far scored two top 10s. He's had three top 12 finishes. I think Noah Gregson could continue the momentum. We know how strong the short track program is for Stuart Haas Racing. And he's right now, if not for the 35-point penalty, he would be a borderline playoff contender. So I think that Noah Gregson does have a chance and an opportunity to contend for the playoffs if he keeps up this speed. 
Up next, how about the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This is once again be driven by Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin is the defending winner at this racetrack as he won the fall race in 2023. And I expect Denny Hamlin to once again be a contender. Denny's gotten a couple wins at this racetrack in the last 10 to 15 years. I think he'll have a great chance and opportunity to get at what would be, I believe, his fourth victory at Phoenix, at Bristol. I think he's got a good chance and opportunity, and I think he will be a threat to get it done. This week, and it could get his 52nd or 53rd career victory. Up next, how about the 12th car for Team Penske? This will once again be driven by Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney's had a very good start to the 2024 season where he's finished in the top five the last three consecutive races. But he hasn't had a great relationship with this racetrack. His finishes have been kind of mediocre or he's been involved in an incident where he's had a dominant car. I'm a little worried about Ryan Blaney going into this weekend for sure. We'll see if Ryan Blaney doesn't have any flare-ups and issues and we'll see if he can be a contender for a good run this weekend in the 12th car. Up next, how about the 14 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe's had a solid start to the 2024 season. He's coming off having a top 10 at Phoenix a couple days ago. I do believe that Chase Briscoe could have a good run this weekend if SHR cars are fast. He's had some decent pace and speed. I know he had some issues at Eric Jones at Phoenix. We'll see if he can put those issues behind and have a good run. Up next, how about the 15 car for Rick Ware Racing? This will once again be driven by Kaz Grawla. Kaz Grawla's had kind of an okay start to the 2024 season. He's had some top 30 performances. He has shown some speed and light, but Rick Ware Racing is still looking to build, and they're still looking to improve. We'll see if Kaz can have a good run in the 15 this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway with Rick Ware. Up next, how about the 16 car for Colic Racing? There will be new drivers on the 16 car this weekend as AJ Allmendinger will make his second NASCAR Cup Series start of the year. Of course, AJ focused racing full-time in the Xfinity Series this year. AJ Allmendinger is looking to have a good run. He's been kind of hit or miss at this racetrack in his Cup Series career. He does have an Xfinity Series win here, but he's been a little mediocre here in Cup. On one hand, he can have a good run, and then the next year, he struggles a little bit. We'll see if Carl Racing can bring the pace and speed, and we'll see if AJ Allmendinger can have at least a solid run this weekend at Bristol. Up next, top of the 17 car for RFK Racing. This will once again be driven by Chris Busher. Chris Busher does have a win at this racetrack back in 2022, which he picked up his second career Cup Series win. I think Chris Busher's got a chance to win this weekend. If they don't have any issues on the track, the RFK cars, obviously he's not going to have some of the picker members this weekend. I do believe that Chris Busher could be a threat at contender. I think he will have a solid chance and opportunity to contend for the victory. Up next, how about the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. has had a solid start to 2024, but he's still looking for his first top five finish in nearly 15 or 16 weeks. He also has not been very great at this racetrack. He ran kind of mediocre the last time he ran here, so he'll be looking to have a good run this weekend at Bristol. We'll see what he can do in that number 19 car, but let's be honest, I'm not expecting too much from Martin Truex Jr. I don't think he'll be a massive threat of contender to get it done. This weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway. Up next, how about the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This is once again be driven by Christopher Bell. Chris Bell is coming off of winning last weekend at Phoenix International Raceway, and I think Chris Bell is a championship threat and contender. In the last time he ran here, Chris Bell had one of the strongest cars in the field. So I expect that Chris Bell once again will be a threat and contender, and like I said, I don't think it, there's a chance he's going to, he has a really good chance, in my opinion, to go back to back this weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the 21 car for the Wood Brothers? This will once again be driven by Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton's had a rough start to the 2024 season. Outside of having a 11th place finish in Atlanta, he has finished in the top outside the top 25. He needs to have a good run this weekend. He needs to start showing some improvement because if he doesn't show improvement, he may lose his seat at the end of the year. I'd be worried if I was a Harrison Burton fan about his future in the Cup Series, especially if he doesn't show improvement. Up next, top of the 22 car for Team Penske. This will once again be driven by Joey Logano. I think Logano does have a win here, or he may not have a win here, I'm not entirely sure, but Joey Logano's had a rough start to the 2024 season. Joey Logano only has one top 10 finish, and that was a ninth place finish. It's been a mediocre start to the season. Joey Logano is going to be looking to have a bounce back performance this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway, and I'm a little worried that's not going to happen because it's been a struggling start for the 22 team so far this season. 
Up next, how about the 23 car for 2311 Racing? This will once again be driven by Bubble Wallace. Bubble Wallace has had an okay start through the 2024 season. The first two races ran really, really well, but the last two weeks, not so much. Of course, he did finish in the top 20, which is not bad, all things considered. I think Bob Wallace has a chance for a top 10. I don't think he's going to win this race, but he's had some flashes of having great performances here. So maybe Bob Wallace can, and maybe he will surprise a lot of people and have a good run this weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be driven by William Byron. William Byron had a really great start to the season, won the Daytona 500, but unfortunately, Britt Phoenix did not go so well for him. And let's be honest, Bristol has not been an amazing track for him in the past. But if there's anybody that can run really good this weekend and show some improvement, it definitely is William Byron. I think he does have a chance for top five in that 24 car this weekend. Up next, how about the 31 car for Colic Racing? This will once again be driven by Daniel Hemrick. Daniel Hemrick's been okay to start the year, but not great, which is something I kind of expected going into the season with the College Racing organization. I think Daniel Hemrick will have a chance for top 25, maybe or even the top 20. But other than that, I'm not really expecting much from Daniel Hemrick. I don't think he's going to set the world on fire this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway. Up next, how about the 34 car for Front Row Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Michael McDowell. Michael and Dallas had a pretty good start to the 2024 season, actually, especially on qualifying runs, and did get a top 10 at Phoenix last week, and already has two top 10s to start the season. I think Michael Medell could be a contender for a top 5. We've seen some flash of brilliance from the 34 team so far this year. We'll see if Michael Medell and a 34 team can show some improvement and can run well this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway. Up next, how about the 38 car for Front Row Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen has had an okay start to the season. I think he's still in the top three or top four drivers when it comes to lap sled this year, but he still only has, I think, maybe one top 10 finish for him at this point. He did get a top 20, which is pretty good at Phoenix, and I think he's been okay at this track in the past, but he's also involved in incidents and wrecks. We'll see if Todd Gillen can have a good run in that number 38 car. Up next, how about the 41 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest has not had a great start to the 2024 season. He had top 20 speed at Phoenix, but Shaw has struggled for the most part to start the year. But this is a short track, so maybe Ryan Priest can use some of that magic and can run good. But honestly, I am a little worried about Ryan Priest currently at this moment. Up next, how about the 42 car for Legacy Motor Club? This will once again be driven by John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter Nemechek has had some run-ins recently, especially with Joey Logano. Logano was not very happy with him. We'll see if John Hunter can have a good run, though I'm not expecting much from him. I think Eric Jones has been a little better start this season, which isn't a shock. I think Eric, John Hunter could have an okay performance if the Toyotas show up with some good speed. We'll see what happens. Up next, how about the 43 car for Legacy Motor Club? This will once again be driven by Eric Jones. Eric Jones has actually been pretty good at this racetrack in the past. In his rookie season, he finished in second place. I think he's won here in the Xfinity Series before as well. I believe Eric Jones could be an underdog to win the race. If they show the same speed they had at the beginning of the race at Phoenix, I think the 43 team could be a little bit of a threat to get it done. We'll see what Eric Jones can do this weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the 45 car for 2311 Racing? This will once again be driven by Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick has had a very, very good start to the year, especially the last couple of weeks. He's had a car capable of winning. I do believe Tyler Reddick is going to win in the not-so-distant future. He was solid at Bristol the last time we were here. He's had some good performances here. We'll see if Tyler Reddick can be a threat of contender to get it done this weekend at Bristol. Up next, how about the 47 car for JTG Doherty? This will once again be driven by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now, I think Stenhouse is an underdog pick for a lot of people because Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has actually been pretty good here in the past. He's had some runner-up finishes. He's had some really good runs. I think Ricky Stenhouse Jr. could be a solid underdog pick for this weekend for a lot of people with how well he's performed at this racetrack in the past in that number 47. Up next, how about the 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman, even though he's been a little underperforming to start the season, he is still in the playoffs right now. If Alex Bowman can turn the corner and start showing some improvement, I think he has a chance to make the playoffs. But he's got to start showing a little improvement, and he really hasn't done that up to this point. We'll see what Alex Bowman can do and see if he can have a bounce-back performance this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway in the 48 car. 
Up next, how about the 51 car for Rick or Racing? This one's going to be driven by Justin Haley. Justin Haley had a solid top 25 performance with Rick or Racing. They've had some decent pace start the year. I wouldn't be surprised if Justin Haley has a solid performance. Cog has shown some good runs in the past. So we'll see if Justin Haley can do good with Rick Ware as this team looks to improve and get a lot better finish this throughout the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. Up next, how about the 54 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This one's going to be driven by Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs, I think, is going to be a contender to win. He's been solid here in Xfinity. I think he's won some Xfinity Series races here, if I'm not mistaken. And Ty Gibbs also has been up front and has been consistently getting better and better on a week-by-week -week basis and also led his first laps of the 2024 season. I believe that Ty Gibbs will be a threat of contender to get it done and wouldn't surprise or shock me if Toyota goes back-to-back -back and Ty Gibbs is the one going to victory lane. Up next, how about the 71 car for Spire slash Trackhouse? This one's going to be driven by Zane Smith. Zane Smith has underwhelmed so far this season. Not been a great start to the year. Luckily, we're going to track where he, this actually track where he announced that he was going to be running full-time in this car of 2024. He needs to show a little more improvement, but he is still technically a rookie. We'll see what Zane Smith can do in the number 71 car this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway. Up next, how about the 77 car for Spire Motorsports? This one's going to be driven by Carson Hosovar. Carson Hosovar has been the most impressive rookie to start off this year. He has had a couple top 15 finishes, and I expect that Carson to have flare-ups, but he's been extremely impressive. I believe that Carson Hosovar, if he doesn't run any trouble incidents, I can see him getting another top 10. I think he is a borderline playoff contender. He's still 24th in points, has got to score some more stage points, but he has been very impressive to start off the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. And finally, let's talk about the 99 car for Trackhouse Racing. This is once again be driven by Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez had an all-right start to the season. It's not as good as last year started, but he has been consistent. He's been a top 15 driver and has had top 10 speed at times. Daniel Suarez also has been okay at this racetrack in the past. We'll see what he can do this weekend in that number 99 car. I think he does have a chance and opportunity to get a top 5 or top 10 if the speed is there. So, that is the entrance for the 2024 Food City 500 at Bristol. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, so you know if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support on Patreon as well. Link description below that, and comment your thoughts below on today's episode. Who's your early pick to win the Food City 500? Let me your picks in the comments below. I don't think I have any more content dropping on the channel today. Tomorrow there should be NASCAR news video dropping on the channel. And we also have the Truck Series race picks dropping later in the afternoon. Then on Thursday we're going to have race picks for the Cup Series race along with the paint scheme preview. Friday there should be NASCAR news video dropping. And Saturday I might have a Shane Van Gisbergen video dropping along with the, Na the Truck Series race review if the weather holds up. And then Sunday if the weather holds up we'll have the Cup Series race review from Bristol. And then we'll be headed to the Circuit of the Americas. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.